a case that was being brought by a woman who does have Down syndrome herself at, at the High Court, challenging the law which currently allows abortion up to birth for a fetus with the condition. Uh, after 24 weeks, only women where there is a either disab disability in the child, including conditions like Down syndrome, or there is serious risk of uh, health, a risk to the mother, are allowed to uh, continue with abortion. A tiny number of cases actually do uh, happen in, in this uh, circumstance. Uh, but uh, she lost her case and the uh, current law still stands. Well, let's talk about this with Ella Whelan, who's a journalist and author of What Women Want. Um, Ella, your thoughts are on that case. Uh, and are you happy or are you sad that that woman lost her case? I'm very pleased. I think it's very good news for uh, women's freedom because really what this case was was not a serious discussion about the discrimination against disabled people in society, but it was an attack on women's bodily autonomy and a, an attempt to limit abortion law dressed up in the guise of contemporary identity politics, protected characteristics, concerns about offence. Mm. Um, Crowther herself, that she's just one of the claimants, um, uses the term offence. In fact, she tweeted saying, it doesn't matter that the law says that my feelings aren't being discriminated against. It doesn't matter that the government says this i'm telling you my feelings are hurt and now yeah. for me as someone who's interested in women's bodily autonomy another person's feelings should not come into consideration no. when an individual is making a decision about her potential to be a mother indeed well heidi crowther was one of uh, of three claimants and hoping to force that uh, uh part that that change in the abortion act um and of course you know these are these are things that have been voted through in parliament and have have, have wide support we know that the 90 percent of uh couples or, or women when they discover that their child is highly likely to have down syndrome do choose to abort now that is usually uh, you know before 20 weeks uh, long before the the legal deadline but in some cases this isn't detected until later or the seriousness of the disability isn't detected till later her argument was that you undermine my value you're saying i'm not of equal value to someone who is who has not got the syndrome who's who's not disabled uh, in my existence today as a grown woman or even as a baby when i'm newly born the first day i'm born as much as a, an able bodied child because of this right to abort but we do have different rules and different laws affecting the, the rights of the child versus the mother uh, uh, up to birth for disabled children after uh, and after the point when they're born. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that we don't value her as a as, as a woman with, dis with, with, with Down syndrome, does it? No, you're completely right. And it's a very disingenuous and very damaging argument to suggest that women who are making serious and in many cases cases painful decisions yeah. um about terminating a pregnancy so i mean you know if you're if you're um you know going for that screening and you're hoping for good news and you're looking forward to becoming a mother and then you find out something that's uh, going to cause problems later and having a down syndrome child or indeed a child with any disability is a challenge a wonderful challenge if people have the ability to be able to take it on if they have the resources you know financial and also emotional yeah. um, then that's a wonderful thing many women are in that position but more importantly actually and this is the real crux of it and and this is something that lots of reports have missed out on don't screen us, which is the campaign supporting Crowther and the other claimants in this case, are also arguing for a, um, a restriction of a new kind of test, non-invasive prenatal tests, NIPTs, which would um, offer women an earlier and non-invasive opportunity to have yeah. information about the pregnancy. At the moment, what you have to do essentially is you wait till a certain uh, limit of weeks. It's often quite you know beyond the 15-week period, and then you take a part of a section of amniotic fluid and test yeah. that. That can risk miscarriage. Yeah. It can risk infection. It's very. It's often very unpleasant for women. Yeah, absolutely. And so then, at the same time as arguing that women should have less choices when it comes to abortion. Abortion. They're also arguing that women should have less choices when it comes to their pregnancy. This is an attack on women's freedom. It has nothing to do with narcissistic claims about feelings of offence or any kind of serious discussion about discrimination. OK, thank you very much indeed, Ella Willen. Really appreciate you joining us to talk about that. Um, 